Today is the first day of September 2020. It is quite a long time since schools were sent back home on a local down. Uh, but the president had promised that he would be back before September to make a very big decision on the fate of reopening schools and all the educational institutions. And I think up to now, we are still waiting for him to come back to make such a big decision on the fate of schools and the places of worship. But uh, meanwhile, we are wait as, we, as, as we still wait for him, the management of BBS Telefine and the Kabaka of Uganda have given us a chance that we can still learn while at home, right in our sitting room, through this program, Somera Mudiro Rio. So please make sure you don't miss this program. So last week, uh, we were talking about foreign influence, and uh, particularly we were talking about the explorers. We said an explorer is a person who leaves his home country to another, mainly to find out more. And our center of discussion last time, we were talking about the Portuguese explorers and Portuguese settlement at the coast of East Africa. We said the Portuguese, uh, the Portuguese explorers were the first group of foreigners to come to East Africa. In the first place, they came to East Africa as explorers when they were looking for the sea route to India. But later, they came back to East Africa and settled. They occupied the coast of East Africa and established the Portuguese Empire at the coast of East Africa. So we discussed reasons why they wanted to find the sea route to India, their settlement at the coast of East Africa, and at this time, I want us to begin by discussing the positive results of the Portuguese at the coast of East Africa. When the Portuguese came to the coast of East Africa, what result, what, what, how did they affect the people of East Africa? And that's what we're going to discuss right now. Because we said the foreign influence are the changes caused by foreigners. So we want to see what changes did the Portuguese cause in East Africa during their settlement at the coast of, and their role at the coast of East Africa. So we look at the positive results. of the Portuguese at the coast we said the Portuguese ruled the coast of East Africa, they settled at the coast and ruled the coast for 200 years. For 200 years, they were at the coast and ruling the coast. So during this time, there are very many changes that they caused. Some of these changes were good, while others were bad. So the good changes that were caused by the Portuguese are the ones we call positive results. So we can call them positive effects of the Portuguese at the coast of East Africa. One, they built Fort Jesus. They built Fort Jesus. Fort Jesus was mainly for protection. Forts of those days were like you can see the barracks today. So the, we have barracks, we have the barracks today mainly for protection. So in the same way, the forts of those days were used for protection. So the social service center that can be compared to the forts during the Portuguese time and during the early, uh, during the early European rule in Africa was uh, at the barracks. So the Portuguese built Fort Jesus. So we are always asked to give a reason why the Portuguese built Fort Jesus. The, the Portuguese built Fort Jesus for protection. Uh, but do you think now it is used for protection? No. Fort Jesus is not now for protection. Fort Jesus is now a tourist attraction. 
And where was it built? Fort Jesus was built in Mombasa. And Mombasa, in, is, Mombasa is in Kenya. So Fort Jesus was built for protection, but right now it is a tourist attraction. Also, they linked East Africa to, Asia, to India and Europe. They linked East Africa to, uh, to India and Europe. So that's when East Africa started knowing about Europe. So relationships started with India and Europe because of the Portuguese. Because the Portuguese were moving from India via East Africa to Europe. Because Portugal is in Europe. So they linked East Africa to India and Europe. Also, they introduced new crops. They introduced new crops in East Africa. They introduced new crops in East Africa. There are some crops which we now, we up to now, we still eat them. Crops like maize. Hmm? They introduced crops like maize. Hmm? We always talk about the yellow maize. They introduced the pineapples. Hmm? Pineapples. Guavas. And many other crops. All of those were introduced by the Portuguese in East Africa. Also, they introduced Christianity in East Africa. They introduced Christianity in East Africa. By the time Portuguese came to East Africa, most people at the coast of East Africa had been converted to, 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 to Islam. So most people were Muslims, while others still followed the traditional ways of worship, I mean the African traditional religions. But when the Portuguese came, for them they were Christians, so they built churches and other places of worship. So they introduced Christianity, much as they didn't promote it so much, but Christianity was introduced at the coast of East Africa by the Portuguese. And also, they introduced new words in Swahili language. They introduced new words. in Swahili language. We have words like meza to mean table. It is not, uh, it is neither Bantu language nor an Arabic language, but it is Portuguese. So such words like meza was introduced in Swahili by the Portuguese. So Portuguese settlement at the coast of East Africa was very important. So we have said they built Fort Jesus and we have said Fort Jesus was built at Mombasa. Fort Jesus was built for protection. So when we are, when we are asked to give a reason why Fort Jesus was built in East Africa, it was built for protection. But how is it important? to the economy of Kenya right now. Fort Jesus is a tourist attraction. It attracts tourists who bring income to Kenya. And I said they linked East Africa to India and Europe. They introduced new crops in East Africa. And such crops have talked of maize, pineapples, guavas. They also introduced Christianity in East Africa 
and they introduced Kiswahili they introduced new words in Kiswahili language so those were the positive results of the Portuguese settlement at the coast of East Africa. The good changes caused by the Portuguese at the coast of East Africa. But also they caused the bad changes. So because the, the, since they caused the bad changes, let us also look at the negative results. Negative results of the Portuguese. negative results of the Portuguese. So these are the bad changes that were caused by the Portuguese in East Africa. That's what we're referring to as the negative results of the Portuguese at, uh, in East Africa. One, they led to decline of coastal trade. They led to decline. They led to decline. of coastal trade. They led to decline of coastal trade. This was because of corruption. The Portuguese officials were so corrupt. And so corruption led to the decline of coastal trade. And also, they levied high taxes. They charged high taxes on the traders. They introduced high taxes. So coastal trade had to decline. So at, at times you, uh, you, uh, we are asked to give ways in which Portuguese rule caused the decline in the coastal trade. One, they were corrupt. And two, they charged high taxes, which made the coastal trade to decline. Also, Africans were denied chance in a trade. Africans were denied chance in a trade. Africans were denied chance in trade. So trade was mostly reserved for the uh, trade was mostly reserved for the Portuguese. Africans were denied opportunity in trade. Also, they destroyed coastal towns. They destroyed coastal towns. They destroyed coastal towns. There were those coastal towns that didn't easily accept Portuguese rule. For example, Kilwa. When the Portuguese reached Kilwa and the Sultan of Kilwa didn't just allow them to take over, they destroyed all the beautiful architecture, the beautiful buildings in Kilwa. And Kilwa was left in ruins. The same happened to Mombasa. When they reached Mombasa, they destroyed it completely because the Sultan of, of Mombasa didn't just allow them to take over. So all the beautiful houses in Mombasa and Kilwa were destroyed by the Portuguese in order to take over. Also, they led to loss of lives during their wars. They led to loss of lives during their wars. They led to loss of lives during their wars. Remember when they were coming to take over the East African coast, they were taking those coastal towns by surprise. So many people would be left dead. Besides that, during their 200 year rule at the coast, there were many rebellions staged against the Portuguese rule. So during these rebellions, very many people lost their lives. So that's why we say they led to loss of lives during their wars.
and also the Portuguese were harsh. The Portuguese were harsh. The Portuguese were harsh. So in other words, we are meaning that the Portuguese used the harsh rule. And I think that one explains why Portuguese rule was not liked at the coast of East Africa. The coastal people never liked the Portuguese and their rule at the coast because they were harsh. The Portuguese officials were corrupt and also they charged high taxes. That one made their rule not to be liked by many people. So sometimes we ask why Portuguese rule was not popular at the coast of East Africa. Not being popular, we mean, why was it not liked by many people at the coast of East Africa? It was not liked by many people at the coast of East Africa because the Portuguese officials were corrupt. They were also harsh, and also they charged high taxes. So those were some of the negative results of Portuguese rule at the coast of East Africa. And later, we said the Portuguese established a very large empire at the coast of East Africa. And we always refer to it as the Portuguese Empire at the coast of East Africa, which lasted 200 years. So we want to find out why the Portuguese Empire, which had lasted for all the 200 years, reached a time and it declined. It collapsed completely and it was not there. So let us look at the reasons why the Portuguese Empire declined at the coast of East Africa. Reasons why the Portuguese Empire reasons why the Portuguese Empire declined. at the coast of East Africa. So we are saying the Portuguese established their empire for 200 years at the coast of East Africa. But time reached when the Portuguese Empire declined and it, it collapsed. So what factors made the Portuguese Empire to collapse at the coast of East Africa? One, the Portuguese officials were corrupt. The Portuguese officials The Portuguese officials were corrupt. So people hated them because of corruption. So this means that in an organization or any government, when there is corruption, that organization or that government is likely to decline or collapse. So the Portuguese empire at the coast of East Africa collapsed because the Portuguese officials were corrupt. So it, corrupts, it, it collapsed because of corruption. Another one. is the lack of funds. The Portuguese Empire at the coast of East Africa lacked funds. All the funds were getting lost in corruption. And remember the coastal trade had reached a time and declined, also because of corruption. So the, the economy became weak due to lack of funds. So the Portuguese Empire collapsed because of the corrupt Portuguese officials and also lack of funds. Another one was the constant rebellions against the Portuguese rule. There were constant rebellions.
that our constant rebellions against Portuguese rule So the Arabs at the coast and also the other Africans at the coast, they were organizing rebellions against the rule of the Portuguese. Remember, they didn't like the Portuguese because of corruption and also being harsh. So all the time, they were organizing rebellions against their rule. And eventually, Portuguese rule had to decline and it collapsed. Also, the Portuguese controlled a very large area with a few officials. The Portuguese controlled a very large area The Portuguese controlled a very large area. with a few officials so the portuguese empire was stretching from mozambique up to mogadishu in somalia and yet they had very few officials to administer that very large area and automatically the empire had to decline and it collapsed. And also the decline in coastal trade weakened the, made the Portuguese empire weak. The decline in coastal trade made the empire weak. Remember coastal trade was the major source of income for the Portuguese empire at the coast of East Africa. But this time the emp uh, trade at the coast had declined. So the Portuguese officials who were ruling the Portuguese empire couldn't get enough funds to run the activities of the empire at the cost. So that one made the Portuguese empire to decline. And finally it came to an end after 200 years. So we can now look at problems the Portuguese faced at the coast of East Africa. While they were settling at the coast and ruling the coast, what problems did they face? We have seen that they had some positive changes they made at the coast, like introducing new crops, building Fort Jesus, which is a tourist attraction now, introducing Christianity. And we have also seen their negative inf effects, like being very harsh, being corrupt, leading to the decline of the coastal trade, destroying the coastal towns. All of those were the negative changes that they caused. But also as administrators, administrators and settlers at the coast, they also faced several challenges. So let us look at problems. Or we can always refer to them as challenges. Problems faced by Portuguese. Problems faced by Portuguese. At the coast of East Africa.
So the Portuguese during their stay and administration at the coast of East Africa, they also faced very many problems. They faced very many challenges. And among them, they had a few officials. One, they had a few officials. Or you can always say they had a few administrators. <laughs> and yet they were controlling a very large area. So this one made administration very difficult. And also corruption. The Portuguese officials were corrupt. Another problem was corruption. And that one eventually caused it is at the decline of the Portuguese Empire. We have also talked about lack of funds. This was another challenge, more especially when the coastal trade declined. Rebellion is against their rule. Rebellion is against their rule. The Africans at the coast and the Arabs were always staging rebellions against the Portuguese administration at the coast. And I think, and we said that eventually caused the decline of the Portuguese empire at the coast of East Africa. The harsh climate in East Africa. the harsh climate in East Africa was another challenge. Because remember the Portuguese were Europeans who come from the temperate regions. And when they came to East Africa, they found the climate with a lot of rain and very high temperatures. So those were some of the problems the Portuguese faced while they were in East Africa. So they faced a number of challenges and those were some of them so after understanding the Portuguese exploration and settlement at the coast of East Africa, we have looked at the Portuguese empire at the coast of East Africa. This time, I want us to understand these explorers in the different regions of Africa. In P5 and P6, we have discussed many of them. And we are going to repeat the same. So let us look at the examples of explorers. So we are going to look at the explorers for each region of Africa. And we are beginning with East Africa. That's where we fall. Examples of explorers in East Africa. examples of explorers in East Africa. So we have already understood who an explorer is. We said an explorer is a person who leaves his home country to another, mainly to find out more about that country. And I said explorers who came to East Africa, all of them came from Europe. So the continent where explorers, who came, where explorers came from, when they asked for the continent, they came from Europe. Though they could have come from the different European countries, but what is universal in that case is that all explorers came from a continent called Europe. We have already talked about the Portuguese explorers. And we said the Portuguese came from Portugal. And the Portuguese explorers were the first group of explorers to come to East Africa. And so who was the first explorer to come to East Africa? The first explorer to come to East Africa was Vasco da Gama. 
Vasco da Gama. So when we talk about examples of explorers in East Africa, we begin with Vasco da Gama. But remember for him, he didn't come to the interior. He mainly explored the coast and continued to India. And he didn't have a lot of exploration at the coast because his mission was to look for the sea route to India. So the Portuguese explorers were the first explorers to come to East Africa. However, for them, they mainly stopped at the coast and they continued to India. So why did the Portuguese explorers come to East Africa? The Portuguese explorers came to East Africa when they were looking for the sea route to India. They didn't have anything else they were looking for. I mean, the Portuguese explorers, for them, they only came to East Africa when they were looking for the sea route to India. It was only later when they came back and they settled and they controlled the coast of East Africa. So after the Portuguese explorers in the 1480s, then later in the 1750s, other explorers started coming to East Africa. And among them, we had John Hanning speak. John Hanning speak. The problem normally is with this second name, Hanning. Many, well, some books are right Hannington, but he was not Hannington. He was Hanning speak. Then we had Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Another one we had James Grant. And we had Sir Samuel Baker. Henry Morton Stanley. The challenge is with writing the name Morton. Many people write Morton instead of Morton. Dr. David Livingstone. Dr. David Livingstone. Then we have Joseph Thompson. We had other explorers like Count Teleki. We also had others like, Doc, like Dr. Fisher. Ludwig Kraft. Jacob Erhadit. And I think basically we shall discuss those ones there. Then someone will always ask, why should we discuss about these explorers? How can they be valuable to our lives? It helps us to understand that Africa is very rich in resources. And we are sitting on, a, we are sitting on, on, on very important resources in Africa. 
and many other people from other continents for very many years have always struggled to take part in exploiting these resources while we are just looking. So we want to see the contribution of each of these people such that we can understand how best we can also use our own resources. And so let us begin with John Speak and uh, Richard Button. So I want us to talk about these explorers one by one. John Speak and Richard Button. We are looking at them at once because they came together. That's why we're looking at the two at once. John Speaker and Richard Button. For them, they came to East Africa when they were looking for the sea route to India. They had been sent by the Royal Geographical Society to find the sea route to India as uh, well to find the source of River Nile. The European countries had seen, the, had heard about the River Nile. They had seen it in Egypt for those who had managed to come to Egypt. But they didn't know where this Nile was coming from. They would only see the Nile flowing year in, year out. It doesn't dry. It comes with a lot of water. So there was always a mystery about the source of River Nile. They could always ask themselves, where does the Nile come from? Some people would say, no, it must be coming from one of the mountains in the interior. But others would say it must be coming from one of the inland water bodies. So Europeans developed an interest in looking for the source of River Nile. So they started descending the several explorers to East Africa. Remember we said when the early foreigners came to Africa, they referred to Africa as a darker continent. You remember why they referred to Africa as a darker continent? We said they called Africa a darker continent because they didn't have information about the interior of Africa. So because due to lack of information, they always referred to it as a darker continent. So they reached a time and they started sending explorers to come to the interior and find out about Africa's interior. And among them, we are saying that was John Speak and Richard Button. Why was John Speak and Richard Button sent to East Africa? We have said they came to look for the source of River Nile. They came to look for the source of River Nile. So those two came to East Africa to look for the source of River Nile. And we said which organization sent them to find the source of River Nile? They were sent by the Royal Geographical Society. They were sent by the Royal Geographical Society. It is always abbreviated as R. G S. So normally they ask which organization sent John Speak and uh, Richard Button to find the source of River Nile. It was the Royal Geographical Society. Why did the Royal Geographical Society 
send John Speak and Richard Burton to East Africa. They were sent to look for the source of river Nile. So when John Speak and Richard Burton reached East Africa, they arrived at Zanzibar. They stayed there for some short time and they set off for the interior. When they came to the interior, they followed the long distance trade routes and moved up to Lake Tanganyika. They became the first Europeans, Richard Burton and John Speak. Richard Burton and John Speak. were the first Europeans to see Lake Tanganyika. We don't say they were the last people so I don't say they were the first people because the natives and the Arabs who were carrying out trade around that area had already seen Lake Tanganyika. But no, uh, no European had seen Lake Tanganyika. Don't even say they were the first foreigners because we had the Arab slave traders who had moved up to Lake Tanganyika. But no European had already reached, had yet, had reached Lake Tanganyika yet. So Richard Burton and John Speak became the first Europeans to see Lake Tanganyika. So sometimes we are asked to mention the first Europeans to see Lake Tanganyika. That was Richard Burton and John Speak. Why did Richard Burton and John Speak come to East Africa? They came to find the source of river Nile. Unfortunately, these two didn't find the source of river Nile. Let us assume this is the map of East Africa. These two started their journey from the coast of East Africa and they came following the long distance trade routes. They came following the long distance trade routes up to Ujiji. This is Lake Tanganyika on Lake Tanganyika. And they became the first Europeans to reach Lake Tanganyika and they saw it. When the two reached Lake Tanganyika, they both of them agreed and believed that Lake Tanganyika could have been the source of the Nile. Because they didn't explore the whole of it, but they thought there could have been a lake, sorry, a river that was flowing from Lake Tanganyika, most, most likely from the north, which could have been the source of the Nile. But because they were both battling with their health, they didn't continue and lack of a better boat to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to enable them to sail around Lake Tanganyika. So they didn't do it. Both of them, after reaching Lake Tanganyika and becoming the first Europeans to see Lake Tanganyika, and both of them had agreed and believed that Lake Tanganyika was the source of River Nile. They came back from Lake Tanganyika. They came up to Tabora. This is Tabora. When they reached Tabora, Richard Burton was very sick and he could not continue anymore with the exploration work. But they had heard about another lake and that's Lake Victoria. 
So John Speak left Richard Burton at Tabora. For him, he continued with the journey northwards to Lake Victoria. And John Speak became the first European to see Lake Victoria, and he even named it Lake Victoria. Why did he name it Lake Victoria? He named it after Queen Victoria, the Queen of England at that time. So John Speak became the first European to see Lake Tanganyika, sorry, to see Lake Victoria. Richard Burton was not able to see Lake Victoria. Why wasn't he able to see Lake Victoria? He was not able to see Lake Victoria because he fell sick at Tabora. So when he became sick, he couldn't continue with the journey. So after that, John Speak came back and told him about his new findings. When John Speak reached Lake Victoria, he believed that Lake Victoria was the source of the Nile. When he went back, he told Richard Burton about his new findings. But Richard Burton did not accept new the new findings of Speak. So they went back to they went back to, 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 to Britain when they had not agreed on the source of the Nile. Because for Richard Burton, he still believed that Lake Tanganyika was the source of the Nile. But Speak had already changed his mind and had believed that Lake Victoria was the source of the Nile. So sometimes they bring a map of East Africa like this and they say, name the European explorers who used the route A. Maybe this one is route A. This one is route A. They say name the European explorers who used the route A. This was Richard Burton and John Speak. But if it is route B, this one ending at Lake Victoria, that was only John Speak because Richard Burton didn't continue to look for Lake Victoria. Why is it that the two explorers disagreed before going back to Europe? It is because they didn't agree on which lake was, could be the source of the Nile. And of course, none of them had seen it. So that was about Richard Burton and John Speak. So after going back to Britain and, re and, and reporting their findings in East Africa about the source of the Nile, for Richard Burton was believing that Lake Tanganyika was the source of the Nile. While John Speak was saying the possible source of the Nile is Lake Victoria. So this time, the Royal Geographical Society had to send John Speak. This time he didn't send John Speak with Richard Burton because of the ill health. Richard Burton had not recovered very well. After suffering a lot of the, hostile, the harsh climate in East Africa, he had not recovered very well. So this time they sent John Speak and James Grant. So John Speak cam comes to East Africa this time with another explorer, that is James Grant. So here we look at John Speak and James Grant. Still John Speak and James Grant were sent to East Africa to find the source of the Nile. They were still sent to East Africa to find the source of the River Nile. They had picked a lot of interest in finding the source of River Nile. I think possibly because they wanted to use the River Nile for transport. Because remember they had a lot of trade goods to bring to, to Africa for sale. So they wanted to find out was the River Nile navigable such that they could use it for transport to the interior and also to gain popularity, to, to gain fame over other European countries. So we are looking at John Speak and James Grant. These two, we are saying they came. To find the source of River Nile. So John Speak and James Grant 
came to find the source of River Nile. Like Richard Burton and John Speak, they had come to find the source of River Nile. And these two moved to the interior together, unfortunately. So for them, after setting off from the coast of East Africa, they came up to Tabora. And from Tabora, they just continued into Karagwe Kingdom. But James Grant was also sickly. Uh, we are coming to the top of the hour. And so let us finish this and we shall summarize up. When he reached Karagwe, this was Karagwe Kingdom. James Grant also became sick. So Speak left him here in Karagwe under the care of King Romanica. Under the care of King Romanica. For him, he continued following Lake Victoria up to Uganda. This is Uganda kingdom now. By then, the king of Uganda was Kabaka Mutesa I. Kabaka Mutesa I. Kabaka Mutesa I welcomed him for some time. And then he continued looking for the source of River Nile. And John Speak became the first European to see the source of River Nile. After finding the source of River Nile, James Grant later also joined him and they went back to Europe using the following the course of the River Nile. They went up to Egypt and then back to Europe. So John Speak became the first European to find the source of the River Nile. So we, we apologize so much because our school kit had got some technical problems. So the exercise about this lesson, you'll find it from the school kit today. I know some of those technical problems have been put right. So whoever is following this program, we are very sorry uh, for the change of program because many people have been calling to find out what had happened to the to the to the lesson Somera Mudiro Lio at 9 a.m. But I've been telling them that it has only been changed to 10 a.m. So please inform any other person who could have not learned about the change of this program such that you can always keep on following this program. Somera Mudiro Lio. Sabasajawangale.